hello and uh, thank you for joining me on this channel. This is by way of a, a news item really. It's something which I thought I really must uh, tell you about. And uh, I've only just got this information. Basically, a group of European scientists have been doing some very interesting work in investigating radio propagation. And although the basis of the work is nothing to do with amateur radio as such, it, it does have quite a, uh, an important uh, point to bring about uh, as far as amateur radio is concerned. The um, document, there's a document being published, it's, uh, it's been, the, the original document which has just been published is in German and I can't read German, but fortunately one of these scientists is a ham radio operator and he's sent me a translation, not a translation of the whole document because it's quite a long document, but it's simply a translation of a summary. Now I gather this document is actually going to be circulated to uh, ham radio societies around the world because it has relevance as regards ham radio. In fact ham radio operators can help with this investigation. The reason for the work of this group of scientists is that they are concerned about the fact that a lot of communication now takes place using satellites. And satellites are very good because uh, we don't have any QSB, you don't have fading, the conditions are guaranteed and you get uh, uh, very good copy around the world. It applies to whether it's military or commercial. I think they're more concerned with the military aspect. The problem with the satellites, of course, is they could be vulnerable, they could be hacked into. I suppose they could be shot down. For one way, one way or another, they could be interfered with. And it's when they're interfered with and there is loss of communication. So what the, what the scientists are doing, they're going back to radio basics and seeing how they can actually use natural uh, mother nature to propagate radio signals. Now we do this all the time as radio amateurs. We, we send signals around the world, courtesy of the, primarily the F layer and uh, it works extremely well. The problem is, of course, that it's not very stable. Now, these uh, scientists have found that there is a way of actually augmenting or assisting propagation. And the idea really is to see whether or not they can artificially uh, affect propagation. What they've actually done? Well, let, let's go back a bit. We know that the 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 these the sun's uh, radiation, the energy from the sun, um, radiates and it affects the uh, the uh, ionized layers around the Earth, of which the F one is the the F layer is the most important one for us, and that is why we get uh, varying radio conditions, uh, uh, day, night, uh, eleven years, month by month, etc., etc., all courtesy of the sun. Now. This document has got one or two diagrams in it, but unfortunately um, the guy hasn't translated the headings um, below the diagram, so I've no idea what they are. But basically it, it, it seems what they're saying is the energy from the sun comes down and it creates these layers around the earth. Provided there is some sort of layer there they reckon that by firing megawatts from the earth on the sweet spots they can actually radically improve the the strength of the layer if you like the intensity of the layer and therefore they can actually improve propagation and they do suggest as far as i can see and it's, I say it's not clear as far as i can see they're suggesting that they may even be able to create layers um, on this sweet spot that don't exist, but it needs megawatts of power. That's that's what that's how I interpret it. Well, apparently, what they've done is they've found by using some um, surplus radar equipment by firing megawatts into into space, really, I suppose, like an NVIS transmission. By firing a megawatt, megawatt pulse, they can actually they can actually change the propagation. They can actually supplement the propagation. And apparently, there's a sweet spot, which, uh, as, as I gather reading this document, the sweet spot is between um, 25 and 35 megahertz. Um, that's where they can have greatest effect. 
And what they found out is that by firing megawatt pulses, they actually can augment propagation only over a short period of time. They don't, they're not specific exactly, but it looks as if it's, we're talking about sort of an hour or so. But if they can uh, augment, augment um, uh, the, or effectively um, improve the propagation in that spectrum, that spectrum can be, become more valuable because, as you know, during the 11 year cycle, it can be very active and uh, it can be very dull in the sunspot minimum years. So that's the basis of which they're, they're working. But the interesting part, this is the interesting part, the interesting part is that they really need a lot of power to actually see how effective they can make this augmentation or the, the improvement of the propagation. And one of the ideas, the easiest way of generating a lot of power is to get a lot of radios that transmit at the same time, which I suppose makes sense actually. But it's quite fascinating. It's on the, it's, it's on the last page here. Yeah, on the last page, um, they say, and this is a price of what they say basically, they say that there's a lot of radio amateurs around the world. We know that's thousands, thousands, and thousands of amateur radios around the world, amateur operators around the world. It would cost us a lot of money to actually generate that amount of power, in other words, megawatts, over a sustained period. And the sustained period is something like two to three minutes. So what they're proposing is that if all the radio amateurs around the world were to transmit a signal, no matter what power it is, but the maximum power they can, on a predetermined frequency, and apparently the frequency is not actually precise, it can be spread over uh, sort of tens of kilohertz, so it hasn't got to be on the spot frequency, but it must be at the, at, the, at the same time. If all the amateurs can transmit that sort of power um, at a particular time, then that will generate enough power for them to decide whether or not the propagation can actually be supplemented or improved or reinforced because radio signals are energy, and energy is what affects the ionised layers. So that's the basis. Unfortunately, as I say, I've only got a pricey, but I think that this is going to be circulated um, to radio societies around the world. It could mean that we can extend the time at which 10 metres and 15 metres is open, because everybody will benefit if, if they can actually improve propagation on these higher frequencies, you'll all benefit. And, you know, I'm reading ahead now, but it's possible that you could actually open 10 and 15 metres and 12 metres simply by generating an awful lot of energy at the same time. In other words, we're mimicking the sun. That's the basis of this document. I've got no further information, but I thought I'd be the first to tell you. Uh, all projects like this seem to have to have a name, so the assisted propagation of radio ionised layers will be known as April. Personally, I think he's talking a load of rubbish.